At first it can be quite intimidating, but I'm just going to go through the very basics, the tools that you use 90% uh, of the time. So I'm just going to go File, New Project, and where it says Import Clip, I'm going to load in my footage. And usually it does all the guesswork for you, the frame rate and the aspect ratio. So I'm just going to click OK. And I've already created this project before, so I'm just going to overwrite. And uh, so this is a video clip, it's from a baseball training session. And um, so I'm just going to try and extract uh, this footage, this kind of guy from the background. And what I want to do is I want to create like a separate object for each part. So a kind of mask object for the head, one for the arm, one for the leg, and so on. So if you use, uh, using the Z and X tools, you can zoom in and X to kind of use the hand tool. And these shortcuts are uh, different from After Effects, which can be quite confusing, but it's just, just remember Z and X. So I'm just going to come in on the head here. And I'm going to use this pen tool with the X. And it's pretty much like the pen tool in After Effects. I'm just going to draw a kind of mask around his head. Get his nose in there. And uh, these tangents are kind of sharp tangent handles. So I'm just going to select all the tangent, all the points. Then I'm going to move these uh, handles to kind of smoothen it up. And then I'm just going to do some readjustments. And if you go here and choose selected tangents, you can sometimes get the, the rest of them out of the way because they can be quite annoying. So like only the point you select is going to have a tangent ha tangent handle, which is good. And um, okay, so that's uh, going to be the head track. And I'm just going to uncheck a uh, shear because I just want to do translate scale rotation and the tracking tools are located here. And you can do frame by frame. I'm just going to track the whole thing. And then I'm just going to stop it here because the mask has started to slip. And I'm just going to correct it. And I'm just going to use the transform tools. I'm not going to go in point by point. Where possible, it's actually better to use kind of transform handles because uh, if you edit the points too much, it can sometimes cause a kind of uh, strange movements along the outlines and basically you want to keep the point in the exact same place for example if this point here is on the tip of the nose just make sure that point is always on the tip of the nose so down here I think that's the tip of the nose point that should always be kind of roughly in the same place in relation to its kind of parent object otherwise you're just going to get kind of points slipping all over the place and causing kind of like a shimmering effect on the outline and you don't want that. So I'm just going to correct it slightly here and let's just zoom in like that and slips off a bit here and here I might have to go in I'm just going to select a whole bunch of points like that and uh, just correct it point by point that and down here so I'm just going to keep on tracking and it slips off again so about here I just want to pop it back I'm just going to use my X tool just that nose point should be right on the tip of the nose Just going to keep it rough for the purpose of this tutorial. And his head kind of turns inwards, so that point basically uh, becomes kind of irrelevant. But I mean, that's pretty good. If you try to do this manually in, in After Effects, it would take a very long time. Kind of slippage here. So that's not bad. And uh, if you click on your um, layer, you've got kind of feathering options here. 
and uh, you can actually set feathering for individual points, which is something you can't do in After Effects. In After Effects, you need to kind of give it an overall feather, but with this, you can actually set um, kind of feathering for uh, individual points. And you have to hit the set key after choosing a value. And it's strange, you, it's kind of like the iPod dial. You need to spin this in a circular motion here. Or you can just enter a value uh, manually. And then, um, just going to go back to track. So now I'm, I'm just going to lock this down, uncheck the cogwheel, which means it's not going to get retracked. No more uh, calculations are going to be carried out on this layer, which is good. Sometimes if you're happy with it, you want to just leave it alone. And I'm just going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this cap. And I'm just going to quickly track this bit here. So I'm using my pen tool. And I'm just going to do a quick track for the uh, cap here. So let's have a look. Uncheck shear and track forwards. It's pretty good to it. So it's slipping here. Just going to correct this. And it kind of falls off there. So as you can see, the corrections, uh, once you make a correction, it actually kind of um, solves all the other issues in between pretty well. Just move this. Something's going on with my uh, transform tools. Totally slips off here. Track forwards. So, I mean, this is a lot quicker than After Effects, still. Kind of guesses uh, really well. I'm just going to track backwards here, just quickly. Just that one frame. So that's not bad. I mean, it could use a lot of tidy up, but I'm just gonna. Whoops, what happened here? Looks like I created a new layer. I'm just gonna delete this. That's my cap layer, apparently. I'm gonna lock it down, uncheck the cogwheel. And then. Um, If we check, uncheck this color, these color bars here, you basically, you can just see just the mat. You can select all mats, and we can see the kind of mask shape here. And uh, just click that again to see the video footage, and unclick mats to get rid of the kind of white opacity effect. So let's say I'm happy with that. What I want to do next is I want to go to um, well, select both layers, or, um, well, just go to File, Export Shape Data, and All Layers, and you can just copy to Clipboard. And if I open up After Effects, I'm just going to load in the footage, and <clears throat> Go to the first frame. It's very important which frame you're on. Actually, I made a mistake, so I'm just going to go to my first frame and then go File, Export Shape Data, do it again, All Layers, Copy to Clipboard, go back to After Effects, go back to frame 1, and go Edit, Paste. And as you can see, it's translated the work we did in Mocha over to After Effects just instantly, which is really handy. 
and then we can adjust the um, properties of each object here which again gives us more control but um, what you might want to do here is use a simple choker which can sometimes be useful and uh, as you can see the cap segments left alone but I'm choking applying the simple choker to the head because uh, kind of executes top to bottom as you can see that's pretty tight I mean it looked like a mess in a mocha but watching it now I mean it actually looks pretty uh, pretty tight there's no uh, shimmering around the edges so um, Obviously, uh, I'm, I'm going to leave the rest of them alone, but uh, I hope that's a kind of handy introduction to Mocha, and uh, thanks for watching.